and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and these are all my favorite combos in the Commander format. I'm making one video talking about all the combos that I have talked about on my channel over the years, whether it be in shorts or on actual videos where I'm talking about combos or in specific deck techs that I've done, decks that I have myself. I'm bringing it all together in one video. I will give a short a little addendum here that I think probably only one or two of these are infinite combos. Whenever you say combos now, people automatically assume it's some infinite game winning combo. For me, a combo is just two cards that through synergy or some other reason happen to work really, really well together to give you some really powerful effect. In some cases, it could be a game ending effect, but I mean, let's be honest, even infinite combos aren't always game ending, right? Let's start out with Solemnity, of course, a very combo crazy card. It does combo with a lot of different things. My favorite combo with it is with Tornado. I have this in one of my own decks. One of the reasons I originally put that deck together is because I thought this was a really neat combo. Of course, Solemnity doesn't allow counters on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands, so it works really, really great with Cumulative Upkeep, which of course, Tornado has. Four and a green enchantment with Cumulative Upkeep, one green, and if you didn't know, that meant you put eight age counters on it every upkeep and then pay that cost. So of course, Solemnity is not going to allow the age counters. So you're essentially always going to be paying zero, but also you can pay two and a green and three life for each velocity counter on Tornado to destroy target permanent and then put a velocity counter on it, activate only once each turn. So of course, those velocity counters also are not going on the Tornado. So with the Solemnity in play, this just becomes three mana every turn I get to destroy any permanent. It. Pretty darn good. I like it a lot. Intruder Alarm, another very combo crazy card, of course. And I know a lot of people will point out there is quite a few infinite combos. It's pretty easy to combo off with Intruder Alarm. It's one of those ham sandwich type of cards like Kiki Jiki that combos very easily. However, my favorite combo that goes with it is Lull Mage Mentor. One blue blue Merfolk Wizard 2-2. Two -two. Whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell, you may create a 1-1 one -one blue Merfolk Creature Token. And you can tap 7 on tap Merfolk, you control the counter target spell. So as I go through this list, I will be throwing out suggestions where maybe you can fit them, right? That's the other thing I'm doing in this video. Obviously, this might be a great fit in a Merfolk tribal deck. Maybe you already have Lull Mage Mentor in your Merfolk tribal deck. Obviously, seven Merfolk is kind of a lot. This guy includes himself, so you would need six others. Maybe you are doing a creature type changing scenario where you can turn all your creatures into Merfolk. Who knows? But what ends up happening once you eventually get those seven untapped Merfolk in play is your opponent's cast, whatever, you tap your merfolk to counter it, doesn't matter what it is. When you counter it, of course, that first ability will trigger, creating a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk, which will then, of course, trigger your intruder alarm, because whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you untap all creatures, and all your creatures will untap again, so that, of course, you can continue to tap your creatures to counter everyone's stuff. This one is most likely game over. It's not a guarantee, but of course, it's very easy to counter every single thing your opponents do, they can respond to the untap trigger by removing your Lull Mage Mentor, right? There are ways around it, but this likely will be game over. And then on top of that, of course, you'll be creating a bunch of Merfolk. You can, in fact, even counter your own stuff if you just want to be creating the Merfolk. And this is one, again, that I think probably could fit in a few Merfolk decks. Conspiracy, another card that has been played in the format a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have this in their deck already for various reasons, right? on the topic of the whole creature type changing deck. And I guess you could fit the Lull Mage Mentor combo in a deck with this combo as well. A blue black deck, very easy to do so. Again, there's a lot of reasons why you want to be playing this card. My favorite combo with it is Ophiomancer. It's not going to blow anyone away. It's not the most powerful combo I'm talking about here by a long shot. But for me, this is the one that is very much the easiest to shoehorn into a deck. Obviously, Ophiomancer is just a fantastic card in any commander game anyway. That can go in any commander deck and be great because of course at the beginning of each upkeep, if you control no snakes, create a 1-1 one, one black snake creature token with death touch. So it is very easily spitting out those black death touch snakes that use a sack fodder. You can use them. They're great blockers, obviously. Your opponents aren't going to want to attack you. So I would say if you already have Ophiomancer in a deck, maybe you could throw Conspiracy in there and this will work. If you already have Conspiracy in a deck, it's very easy to throw Ophiomancer in there and have this combo 
combo work. What actually happens here? Well, you're going to name anything except snake, right? So if you're in a deck where you have conspiracy and you want to name any other creature type, let's say it's merfolk again. Now all your creatures are merfolk. So on every upkeep, your Ophiomancer will check to see if there's any snakes in play. Well, guess what? Your black snake creature token with death touch is now a merfolk. So it will then create another one, which will be a merfolk. So you are creating a 1-1 death touch snake creature token on every single upkeep. That's pretty darn good. Again, it's not going to end games, but it's pretty darn good and very easy to slot this combo into a deck. I will point out this only works with conspiracy. This will not work with a lot of the other creature type changing things because those do it in addition to its creature types. So there will still be a snake in play. Conspiracy changes the creature type into that creature type and nothing else. That's why conspiracy actually works here. Mirror Weave, another very combo-y card, of course. A lot of different ways to use this one. I got a couple here that I have mentioned on my channel that I think are really, really neat to go with Mirror Weave. Of course, two and two white blue mana instant each other creature become a copy of target non-legendary creature until end of turn. There's a lot you can do with this card. You could just throw this in your commander deck and just see what happens, even if you have no combos with it. A couple of my favorites, Drooling Ogre is one I mentioned before on my channel where you can turn everyone else's creatures into a Drooling Ogre. And of course, whenever a player casts an artifact spell, that player gains control of Drooling Ogre. So what you have to do here is, of course, you have your Drooling Ogre in play. You change everyone's creatures into a Drooling Ogre, and then you cast an artifact spell. And then, of course, all those Drooling Ogres in play are now gained control of by you because they all have that ability on them. And then, of course, at the end of turn, they go back to becoming what they normally were before. So you have just permanently gained control of every other creature in play. Pretty neat combo there. The other one is with Scalding Salamander, a personal favorite creature of mine. Two and a red Salamander, two one. When Scalding Salamander attacks, you may have it deal one damage to each creature without flying defending player controls. There's a couple of neat things you can do here. Probably the best one is I just change everyone's creatures into Scalding Salamanders, right? Because of course, Course, your creatures are also going to change into whatever creature you're choosing. So you can't just pick some one, one creature in play. You got to keep your sculling salamander in order for this to work, right? So every creature in play is now a scalding salamander, yours included. And of course, now that means all of your opponent's creatures are two, one creatures because they're all scalding salamanders. So I'm going to attack each of my opponents with the three scalding salamanders I now have in play. And of course, we'll wipe out all their creatures because they'll all get dealt with one damage. So pretty funny, essentially one-sided board wipe that you can, again, fit in probably a few decks. I don't know exactly where this one fits, but Scalding Salamander, in my opinion, is just a great card in a commander game. And Mirror Weave is also just a great card in a commander game. So you could put it in any deck that has red, white, and blue colors, in my opinion. Let's move on to Planar Guide. Again, another really powerful effect, really unique card. Again, I've talked about it on my channel, how this really is the only way to exile or blink all all creatures in play, right? You exile them and then they come back into play. Three and a white, exile planar guide, exile all creatures. At the beginning of the next end step, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. This is a entirely unique effect. There's no other card in the game of magic that will do that. So of course, for that reason, there is a lot of really neat things you can do with this. This is a fantastic token hating card. If you have an opponent who has a deck that cranks out those creature tokens, this just exiles all tokens, right? Because obviously they don't come back. Of course, my favorite favorite combo with this, as I have mentioned before on my channel, just recently in a deck tech, in fact, is with Gather Specimens. This does require a lot of mana, because of course, Gather Specimen does cost three blue, blue, blue. It is an instant. If a creature would enter the battlefield under an opponent's control this turn, it enters the battlefield under your control instead. So this will work with any blinking. Again, a card that you probably could put in almost any commander deck, and it's not going to be a dud. It's always going to be good. Worst case scenario, your opponent casts their commander and you gain control of it, right? You can very easily do that with Gather Specimens. And Planar Guide is also a card that you're never going to be sad to see in a commander game. A worst case scenario, your opponent crater hoof behemoth attacks you, it becomes a fog, right? So they're always going to be good. Any white blue deck, you could put both these cards in. 10 mana is a lot to pull off the combo, but you can do it because it is an end step trigger. Activate your planar guide on your opponent's end step 
and they won't come back until the following end step. So if that is end step is before your turn, you untap on your turn. And as long as you have six mana, you can cast the gather specimens and all creatures on your end step will enter the battlefield under your control. Another way to permanently steal all creatures. The funny part about this combo though is whenever you activate your planar guide and your opponent has their commander in play, what do they do? Do they just put it back in the command zone? I suppose if they suspect this combo is about to happen, they will. If they don't, then you're going to get it, right? Let's move on to Generous Patron. Another card that is very neat commander card that you can do a lot of neat things with two and a green elf advisor one for when it enters the battlefield support two however whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control you draw a card and a combo that i used to have in my volroth deck back when i had a volroth deck was with generous i mean generous patron has to be in that deck anyway i imagine anyone who has that deck has a generous patron because whenever you're putting minus one minus one counters on creatures you get to draw cards right this is any kind of counter placed on your opponent's creatures and a combo i had in that deck is with tetsamok primal death which says pay a black and reveal tetsamok from your hand put a prey counter on target creature activate only during your turn so of course a prey counter is a counter so with your generous patron in play this becomes one black mana draw a card right because i'm going to pay the black reveal it put a prey counter on a creature and generous patron will trigger i can put 20 prey counters on the same creature if i want to they don't have to be different creatures creatures it only has to be during my turn and then added bonus after i draw a bunch of cards i can just cast my tetsamok and destroy all creatures my opponents control with prey counters on them right so that works as well again in my opinion a slam dunk in a volroth deck but works in a lot of decks where maybe you want to be putting a counters on your opponent's creatures in a potter deck probably a great fit there i think because again generous patron likely goes in that deck give it some consideration there really neat combo another one of my personal favorites Unnatural Selection and Spirit Mirror. Again, probably both decent cards in a commander game. Spirit Mirror, two white, white enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. If you have no reflection tokens on the battlefield, create a 2-2 white reflection creature token. So again, funny enough, this works with the conspiracy where you can change all creatures into any creature except reflections. And this will continue to crank out those reflection tokens on your upkeep. Not super great. Why it works so good with Unnatural Selection though is because it's a different sort of creature typing changing scenario because your spirit mirror also says pay zero to destroy target reflection. Fantastic card to throw in your deck if your buddy has a changeling tribal deck because of course this is just pay zero to destroy any changeling. But of course with unnatural selection we can pay one and choose a creature type other than wall. Target creature becomes that type until end of turn. So if you haven't figured it out what this becomes is pay one mana destroy a creature. Very easy way to just destroy any creature on board. I would say again if you're in any deck that is blue and white that happens to be doing the creature type changing thing, right? The unnatural selection is the card here that likely you probably already would want in your deck for whatever reason. If you have a commander that is blue and white that cares about a certain creature type, maybe this is a combo that will nicely fit into your deck, right? You want to make sure that if you only get one piece, it's not completely dead. At least I can use it, right? At least that unnatural selection is usable in my deck for whatever reason. And if I happen to get the spirit mirror then I got this great combo but if I don't at least it's not a completely dead draw right that's the kind of place I would look for these kinds of combos another one that is in one of my own personal decks crafty cut purse and rampage of the clans like not really a head scratcher here right it's pretty obvious what's happening crafty cut purse three and a blue human pirate with flash when it enters the battlefield each token that would be created under your opponent's control this turn is created under your control instead and again this probably works with a bunch of different cards that are having your opponent's create stuff but rampage of the clans to me is the biggest payoff here again it is eight mana that's a lot but instant speed and flash means you can do it all at instant speed so rampage of the clan says destroy all artifacts and enchantments for each permanent destroyed this way its controller creates a three three green centaur creature token so what this ends up becoming is destroy all artifacts and enchantments in play which is already pretty good and then you get a giant centaur army if your opponents each control i don't know let's say four artifacts and enchantments that's not even a lot and maybe you got a couple as well you're going to easily end up with like 15, 20 centaur tokens, right? Close out the game pretty quickly after that. It is totally worth the eight mana in my opinion. 
Pure Reflection is a card I've talked about on my channel before that I think can fit in a couple different scenarios. Two and a white enchantment. Whenever a player casts a creature spell, destroy all reflections. Then that player creates an XX white reflection creature token where X is the mana value of the spell. Definitely a weird card. It is a symmetrical effect, right? It works on everybody. Where I like this, and I've talked about before where I like it, is in, say, in the Lenda deck where you want creatures to be dying because, of course, on everyone's turn, whenever they're casting creature spells they're creating those reflection creature tokens that are then going to get destroyed by the next creature spell that gets cast and of course a destroy is a die you're getting a dies trigger that's where i like this card in a deck where you want dies triggers which in white maybe isn't very common but alenda would be one where i think it's a fantastic fit maybe you have a bit of a token theme there as well the combo though is well there's a couple shields of velis vel because it is white is the one that can very easily slot into Say that Alenda deck, one mana tribal instant shapeshifter has changeling creatures target player controls get plus one plus O oh, and gain all creature types until end of turn. So again, with the creature type changing thing, and you could put a bunch of these into a deck together. I did that myself. I have a creature type changing deck that I did on my channel. You can check out that includes a lot of these really neat combos. But again, for me, you're putting pure reflection in your deck because it happens to work in your deck and you just throw shields of Velus Vel in there because it can also work. I mean, it could work with a vampire tribal theme there too as well if you're doing an alenda deck that is doing that how the combo works well your opponent that you want to board wipe happens to cast a creature spell your pure reflection triggers it's going to destroy all reflections in play and you target them with shields of velis vel now all of their creatures are all creature types which of course includes reflections and then the pure reflection will resolve wiping their entire board pretty neat little combo again it works with the spirit mirror too because that destroys reflections there's a lot of overlap here with some of these for sure all right let's move on to the three card combos so now we're getting a little more complex but i would say these combos are really going to make things happen in a game and in fact some of them are infinite and can just straight up end a game let's start out with my bone miser tortured existence combo both of these cards work fantastically together of course for a number of reasons tortured existence a one black mana enchantment pay a black and discard a creature card return target creature card from your graveyard to your your hand so for one black mana you can swap two creatures but then you can do it again right you can just keep repeating the process and of course with a bone miser in play every time you discard a creature card you get a 2-2 zombie so essentially what happens as long as you got one creature in your hand and one in your graveyard this becomes one black mana create a black zombie pretty fantastic however let's add green to this deck dryad arbor is in fact a land and a creature so when you discard it your bone miser is going to give you that 2-2 zombie because you're discarding a creature card but also whenever you discard a land you're going to get two black mana so now discarding that dryad arbor gives you a zombie and two black mana and of course tortured existence cost a black mana to activate so if you have your dryad arbor in your hand or graveyard and only one other creature in your hand or graveyard you can go infinite and create an infinite army of zombies again doesn't necessarily win you the game but it is very much likely going to and again this to me is a combo that can very easily slot into a lot of decks if you have a black discard deck you're probably already playing bone miser tortured existence should be in your deck if you don't already have it if that deck is green okay so a black and green deck that wants to be discarding of course it has to be green to fit the dryad arbor in there dryad arbor could go in any deck anyway it's a land so it, at very worst it taps for mana this to me is a very easy slot into that strategy another one i've talked about that i love a lot is last laugh with high priest of penance high priest of penance of course says whenever high priest of penance is dealt damage you may destroy target non-land permanent again commander staple people have been playing the format for a long time it's also a human and a cleric so very very easily slots into human and cleric tribal giving you some ideas where this combo might fit last laugh two black black enchantment whenever a permanent other than last laugh is put into a graveyard from the battlefield last laugh deals one damage to each creature and player this is a dangerous card i will just throw that out there when no creatures are on the battlefield sacrifice last laugh so of course when any permanent goes to the graveyard this is going to deal one damage to each creature and each player your high priest of penance being one of those creatures Creatures, which of course when it's dealt damage is going to destroy an on land permanent of course the other piece that is needed here is to make your high priest of penance 
indestructible. Nothing specific needed, just anything that will make your High Priest of Penance indestructible, which of course in white and black colors, there's an absolute ton. Indestructible creatures do indeed still take damage. And of course, when your High Priest of Penance destroys that non-land permanent, it will then trigger your last laugh again, because that is a permanent that went to the graveyard. Deal a damage to your High Priest of Penance again and repeat the process. You got to be careful here because this is dealing damage to each player as well. So you got to make sure you have a decent amount of life but what should happen here is you destroy all your opponent's non-land permanents. It basically is up to you how much damage you want done to players. At any point, you can make this stop. High Priest of Penance is a may, right? So you don't have to keep doing it. At any point, you can stop it. You can do a little of a political theme here. This is a fantastic combo, in my opinion, that I think, again, any white-black deck, maybe Human Tribal, maybe Cleric Tribal, something like that, probably could give a look and see if it fits. Let's talk about Maskwood Nexus, again with the changeling creature type changing thing, so maybe this can fit in the same sort of scenario. This is my favorite combo with Maskwood Nexus, of course, it enables a whole lot of neat things to happen. I've talked about this one recently in my Val deck, because I thought it was a good slot in there. Homing Sliver says, each Sliver card in each player's hand has Sliver Cycling 3, which means you can pay 3, discard it, and go search for another Sliver and put it into your hand, and of course with Maskwood Nexus, every creature in your hand is a sliver, so they all have this ability as long as your homing sliver is in play. So that already is pretty darn good, but let's throw a Falconrath Gorger in play, which says each vampire creature card you own that isn't on the battlefield has madness. Its madness cost is equal to its mana cost. So of course, Maskwood Nexus is making all your creatures vampires as well. And the sliver cycling is discarding, and that means your Falconrath Gorger will trigger because madness wants you to be discarding. So what ends up happening here is for three mana, I can discard a creature from my hand, go get something out of my library, and then cast that creature that I am then discarding with the sliver cycling. Pretty neat combo. It is pretty man intensive, but it's a neat one. I will end off with a couple of really silly combos that I did not come up with myself. I just happened across them in my travels and they are really neat ones. I don't know where exactly you're going to put them. Maybe you could build your entire deck around them because they are pretty janky. Game ending possibly as well. So let's talk about Mycosynth Lattice. Again, one of those cards that is sort of infamous for comboing with certain scenarios. Lots of different things you can do here because of course all permanents are artifacts in addition to their other types all cards that aren't on the battlefield spells and permanents are colorless players may spend mana as though it were mana of any color so of course the big big part there is all permanents are artifacts in addition to their other types if you want a really easy combo here that people have been playing in the commander format since forever mycosynth lattice i cast my vandal blast and all my opponent's stuff is gone i guess that's the easy way to do it the really fun interesting way to do it is with bludgeon Brawl. This is a combo I came across and I'm like, wow, I would not be unhappy if my opponent did this in a commander game because it's so darn weird. So two and a red enchantment, each non-creature, non-equipment artifact is an equipment with equip X and equip creature has plus X plus O where X is the artifact's mana value. So with Mycosynth Lattice in play, of course, everything in play is an artifact. So all non-creature permanents, lands included, now turn into equipment. Very strange, right? Now, if you throw in into the mix an armory automaton for example again there's a couple neat things you can do with this very specific interaction this is one when armory automaton enters the battlefield or attacks you may attach any number of target equipment to it so of course this guy enters the battlefield and every non-creature permanent in play is an equipment and they will all attach to your armory automaton. <laughs> Pretty funny. What do you do from there, right? Your armory automaton is going to be really, really big. You could probably one-shot somebody. Of course, the lands won't add anything. They're going to add a, a plus zero to the power, obviously, because their mana value is zero. They will be all attached to your armory automaton. Where do you go from there, right? That's the interesting part. I will point out here for all the people who are like, oh, I just sacrificed them all. No, you do not control them. When you attach those equipment controlled by your opponents, to your armory automaton you don't actually control them so of course you can't sacrifice them you can only sacrifice things you control but there are ways to take even more advantage of this situation it's a really funny interaction for sure the funniest combo i have ever come across in my travels i think is with warp world which of course is not a card that a lot of players want to see in a commander game i myself do not love playing against chaos cards however if you're just gonna end the game that i guess i'm okay with right if you're gonna cast a warp 
world. And when it resolves, basically the game is over. Fine. Okay. I'm okay with that. If you have some way to actually close out the game once you've cast your warp world, all right. I can deal with that. That's fine. And this is by far the funniest one I've ever come across. I never actually played against it. I had a patron of mine tell me they played in a game where this happened. It is really, really interesting, mostly because it uses a really funny old card that I've been wanting to use in a deck for a long time. So Warp World is five red, red, red sorcery, eight mana. That's a lot. However, it has, of course, a very powerful effect. Each player shuffles all permanents they own into their library, then reveals that many cards from the top of their library. Each player puts an all artifact, creature, and land cards revealed this way onto the battlefield, then does the same for enchantment cards, then put all cards revealed this way that weren't put onto the battlefield onto the bottom of their library in random order. So essentially, all permanents go into play. The non-permanents that you reveal will go on the bottom of your library. Now, what card is going to interact with Warp World and have you win the game? I would love to know if you guys have any suggestions that you could throw out there. What card could I play? I, I mean, I guess I could Teferi protection, phase out all my stuff so my stuff doesn't get shuffled in. I, I don't know if that's, in what way is that going to win you the game, right? Your opponents are still going to have a bunch of stuff. Have you guys seen any really wacky combos with Warp World where someone wasn't just throwing the game into a blender, I'm actually using this to win the game. The funniest one I've ever heard of, and this one is absolutely fantastic, is with Monkey Cage. Five mana artifact, when a creature enters the battlefield, sacrifice Monkey Cage and create X, two, two green monkey creature tokens where X is the creature's mana value. Now, I wasn't sure about this one. I'm pretty sure it does work. When my patron told me about this, I was like, I don't think that works. And then I thought about it and I'm like, okay, well, maybe it does. This is one of the jankiest combos I've ever seen. You would almost have to build your deck around this. The only way this actually works is if your monkey cage is in your library and then you happen to get it with your warp world. So this really is a prime chaos win because of course you got to get lucky here. You got to luck your way into getting the monkey cage into play off of the warp world effect, right? Each player shuffles all their permanents into their library, and then you're going to reveal that many cards from top of your library. And one of the things that you reveal has to be the monkey cage in order for this to work. When you have an effect like this, like a warp world, right? Everyone is going to get their ETBs after this spell resolves. The spell has finished resolving, and if somebody's got a Eternal Witness and another guy's got a Mull Drifter, all those triggers will go on the stack after the Warp World is long gone, right? They'll go on the stack in turn order, actually, for all those wondering how that works. Monkey Cage has a triggered ability that is looking for other creatures to enter the battlefield, and of course, whenever you have a whole bunch of things entering the battlefield at once, they all see each other entering the battlefield, right? If someone peeled a soul warden off the top with the warp world, it would see all the other creatures entering the battlefield and you would gain life off of all of them. Monkey Cage is going to see all the other creatures entering the battlefield, okay? That is what the combo is here. All your creatures, all your opponent's creatures. Again, there's a lot of luck involved here. What if your opponents don't get any creatures? What if they just get enchantments and artifacts? That would suck. But the presumption here is that likely there's gonna be a bunch of creatures entering the battlefield, both under your control and your opponents as well. Cause this looks for whenever any creature enters the battlefield. And so for every single creature that has entered the battlefield because of that warp world, your monkey cage will trigger. Now I know people will say, okay, but it sacrifices itself. Sure, but a sacrifice is just part of the effect. It doesn't say if you do, right? That's the wording that would mean you would only get one effect here. If this said sacrifice monkey cage, if you do create X tutu, and that doesn't say that, right? All it says is you gotta sacrifice it. If you've already sacrificed it with the first resolution of the ability, then the next one is just gonna say, okay, we'll sacrifice the monkey cage and the sacrifice part is already done. You don't have to worry about that anymore, right? So I'm quite certain this works. Works. So what happens if you can pull this off is your monkey cage will trigger for every single creature that just entered the battlefield and X is the creature's mana value and you're going to get X22 monkey tokens for each of them. So what's that number going to be? I mean, if it's 20, you're getting 22 monkey tokens, right? I mean, heck, even if you don't get enough power to close out the game with this, it is just such a funny, interesting combo. There's no way as much as I hate warp world and chaos spells, there's 
no way I would be upset with someone if they pulled this off. It's the funniest, jankiest combo I think I've ever come across. It's a fantastic one. Where would you fit this? I guess if you maybe had a deck that already had Warp World, your Chaos deck, throw Monkey Cage in there, maybe you'll get lucky. I mean, the jank level here is incredible because not only do you have to pull it off, you have to get the monkey cage off of your warp world, which there's no way around that. That's just complete luck. And also you got to hope a whole bunch of creatures enter the battlefield with the warp world effect as well, right? Super funny combo. Had to give it a mention in this video. These are all my favorite combos that I have come across in my travels. Again, most of them aren't necessarily game winning. Certainly not many of them are infinite. They're just really fun interesting combos with great synergy that I think probably you could very easily find room for in a deck if you already have one of the pieces or if you're doing something very similar in your deck already. You guys let me know what your favorite combos are in the commander format, ones that I didn't mention on this video. That is it for today though and thanks for tuning in.